the past and future of our solar system. Is this the end? Our solar system is a magical place. Countless worlds are scattered across billions of kilometers of space, each being dragged around the galaxy by our sun like a complicated clockwork. But how did we get our solar system? Why are these objects in their present location? In this video, we'll take a look at everything you need to know about the history of our solar system and what the future awaits. The universe was created 13.8 billion years ago by the Big Bang. Our solar system came into being much later. Around 4.6 billion years ago, it began as a massive cloud of dust and gas created by leftover supernova debris. The death of other stars gave birth to ours. The cloud that orbited the center of our galaxy was mostly hydrogen, with traces of helium and heavier elements forged by previous stars. The cloud collapsed under its own gravity over the next 100,000 years, forming hot, dense protostars, one of which was our Sun. Our baby Sun continued to accumulate material for 50 million years, until temperatures and pressures in the core became so high that hydrogen began to fuse into helium. After that, there was light. Hydrogen fusion produced enormous amounts of energy which counteracted the sun's gravity, stabilizing the young star and preventing it from accreting more material from the rotating disk of leftover debris around it. The sun entered its most active phase, becoming a main sequence star. It is still in this stage today and we will be for the next 5 billion years. The sun separated from its stellar siblings after 500 million years and continued to orbit our galaxy's center as a lone star. While the infant sun was still gathering material to begin fusing hydrogen, tiny dust particles in the disk around it randomly collided and stuck together, growing to objects hundreds of meters across in just a few years. This process continued for thousands of years, resulting in kilometer-sized objects large enough to attract each other gravitationally. This resulted in more collisions and accretions, resulting in the formation of moon-sized protoplanets in less than a million years. Planets formed primarily from rocks and metals in the inner, hotter part of the solar disk because it was too hot for water and other volatiles, substances that evaporate at room temperature to condense. For about 100 million years, hundreds of these worlds collided and combined in the inner solar system, leaving only four large bodies, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Because the percentage of rocks and metals available in the universe, and thus our solar system's starting materials, is lower than that of hydrogen, helium, and volatiles like water ice, the inner planets did not grow as large as the outer planets. The solar system became more peaceful after the late heavy bombardment. Asteroid impacts still occur, but their frequency and size have decreased dramatically. There is still cause for concern, because the following relatively large impacts occurred in the last 100 million years. An asteroid, or comet, collided with the moon 108 million years ago, forming the 86-kilometer-wide Tycho crater visible from Earth. The dinosaurs would have been alive and well to witness this occurrence. Saturn's famous rings formed during the same geological epoch. An asteroid 5 to 15 kilometers wide collided with Earth 66 million years ago, causing global climate change. This wiped out three-quarters of all life on Earth, including the dinosaurs. The collision of comet Shoemaker Levi 9 with Jupiter in 1994 was a spectacular but sobering event witnessed by telescopes all over the world. In 2013, an asteroid exploded over the Russian city of Chelyabinsk, destroying buildings and sending over a hundred people to nearby hospitals. Our planet is still vulnerable to dangerous asteroid impacts, emphasizing the importance of planetary defense. Stars, like all good things, must come to an end. All stars, including the Sun, will eventually die, and the universe will fade to black. The Sun can keep going by constantly converting hydrogen into helium. This process, known as nuclear fusion, generates enough outward pressure to counteract the Sun's relentless gravitational pull. The Sun is currently consuming 600 million tons of hydrogen per second, and there will come a time when there will be no hydrogen to burn. Despite its voracious appetite for this abundant element, astronomers estimate that the Sun has approximately 5 billion years of fuel remaining. When the hydrogen runs out, gravity takes over and the Sun's core begins to collapse. With the solar material significantly compressed, the temperature in the core will reach a mind-boggling 100 million degrees. In comparison, there are currently 15 million degrees in there. 
Meanwhile, the pressure will exceed a trillion times that of Earth's atmosphere. Because of the extreme temperatures and pressures, helium becomes an ingredient rather than a product, and it is pressed into carbon and oxygen. Every second, the Sun will consume the equivalent of 10 Earth masses of helium. It will eventually grow large enough to swallow Mercury and Venus, and it may even swallow Earth. In its final death throes, the Sun will eject its outer layers into space, much like a snake shedding its skin. For decades, astronomers have speculated about the true impact of the death of a Sun-like star on its system of planets and moons, specifically whether any planets can survive on onslaught. We now have some ideas, thanks to a breakthrough discovery. While the dying Sun will most likely destroy the terrestrial planets, the outer planets may survive. This is a novel approach to searching for alien worlds because the two most common methods rely on detecting changes in the light of the host star. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you with another interesting video.